Welcome back to another episode of Sharp Segments. I'm Nico Sharp along this, alongside Austin P. Governor John John Gazdar. Getting to watch him here for these past two summers has been really exciting. So I just kind of want to dig deeper into like the mentality and just you know what you see out there and what you do on a game day in the batting cage. Yeah, so uh, today I said we just go over some tea and some flips and just go over a little bit of my routine. And uh, it's something I do pretty consistently uh, most days we play in. So let's get into it. Awesome, let's John, do it. John, so it's game day. You just got early here in the cage, and what's the first drill you're going to be working on? Uh, first drill I usually start off with every single day is going to be open 45 drill, just kind of just helping me uh, just clean up my hand path and make sure that staying inside the ball and just drive, being able to drive it to the middle and opposite field. I also like to start. Um, I like to go high to low. It's just kind of a routine I've just had kind of since high school. and just I think it helps me stay on top of the ball and uh, just be more consistent hitting the ball on the, on the line and on the ground. And when you lower the tee, are you focusing on anything different, or is it kind of the same mindset? Uh, when I lower the tee, yeah, it definitely does. Um, I like to work on high tee just to start, just kind of make me, just give me that feel, just stay on top of the ball and just being direct to it. And then uh, the lower I go, I kind of just get more of a feel, just scooping the ball a little bit. So those are the balls I try to get a little bit more in the air since they aren't, since they aren't elevated. Up and away. Um, after I after I do my open forty five, uh, I like to go just no stride, and then um, I just kind of focus on just staying just staying backside and the ball right to the right field. So for the viewers at home taking a look here, and you have the you have the tee set up away. So why away? And and so you said you were working on backside, working to the opposite field, but. So you want high tee here, or what kind of stuff you go for? Uh, to start, uh, I, I like to go outside, middle, and then in, and then I like to go up to down, so I do all those spots. But um, what I like to what I like to start off with going uh, no stride and going just the backside, just kind of make me just have the feeling of being simple and just stay in the right field and make sure I'm inside out to the ball. After that, um, I just do a few where I just kind of land. Uh, I like to get my load and then land. Um, so see where I'm landing at, check my hands, and just make sure I'm in the right spot for a couple, and then just make sure I'm in the right launch, launch position. All these drills, is this stuff you've done since high school, since middle school, is it something you've developed in college? Uh, this routine is a routine I kind of developed in junior college and just really stuck to it since then. And um, I wouldn't say it's the exact same every single day. It's something that I have to every day, but um, and usually sometimes I'll just kind of hit parts of it. And if I feel like I'm lacking on an outside pitch, maybe I'll do more of those. Or if I feel like I'm knocking the head on an inside pitch, I'll work on staying inside of it there. And But um, there are days where I do my full routine, like just top to bottom, every single spot in the zone up and away to down away to up and in, middle in and all that. So um, it just kind of depends day by day and just kind of goes off feel for me. Okay. After I do that, then I just go on normal swings and just try to get a feel for it. Just staying inside the ball and just getting true back smooth.
coach changes a little bit based on who's the starting pitcher for the other team. But does any of uh, your, your your cage drills before the day depend on the starting pitcher this day, or is it kind of just everything remains the same? I wouldn't say my tier routine, my front toss does. I'd say maybe my batting practice or like the way my the way my coach is throwing me batting practice. I'll maybe say like so. I mean, if it's a guy who's kind of more of a thumb or lefty, and say just kind of working away, try to keep you off the barrel, then. Maybe say that day I'll try to just focus on mainly just opposite field for for most of the day, but um, most of the time, I mean, I wouldn't I wouldn't say it, it always depends. I mean, it's just kind of I have my routine. I stick to it for the most part. Okay. Hey, Everything stays the same for my load and everything, and then I'm just stopping when I'm landing. Make sure my hands are in the right spot, and then firing after that. And yeah, who's going to do two more of those? And kind of explain, you know, what are you looking for in your hands? Like, when you say yeah. the right spot, what does that mean for you? Um, for me, I'm just trying to make sure my bat angle's uh, in the right spot for me personally. I mean, I think when you see when you see hitters all around, like, everybody has a lot of different angles. But for me, I just think um, when I'm in my best, my bat's pretty vertical to the ground. It's also facing somewhat towards the catcher and somewhat towards home plate. And that's just something I've gained from experience of playing and um, just from just from, that's just something I've learned from trial and loss and or from uh that's just something I've kinda learned just from um, over time, just from trial and error. I also want to make sure my back elbow uh, is in the slot that I like to because sometimes I'm getting inconsistent it's when it's in a different spot in each load and I just want to make sure I'm as consistent as possible in each spot. And then moving into front toss here is there anything you're looking for or are you kind of just reacting and using hands or what does that look like? Uh, it's kind of the same process for me just trying to stay simple just be inside out. Uh, just make sure I'm just staying on top of the ball and just make sure I'm direct. Second summer here on Cape. Is there any experiences that you know you've learned and been able to adapt to in these summers? Um, I just say it's. I've learned a lot of mindset cues and things. And I just say, just on the on the hitter side of things, it's really important. Just beat the pitcher to either two strikes or beat him to three balls. I mean, obviously as a hitter, you want to get to three balls. You're gonna get deep in the count. But for me, like, if I get a pitch to drive early in the count, like I'm just trying to not miss. It. I'm trying to get a barrel on early and um, just get in the hitter's count and just make sure I'm any pitch that shows up, I'm driving. And after that, um, after I go up in 45, like I kind of did for two, I just do a few, the same thing, just um, similar routine, just kind of just going, just getting the foot down, just make sure my hands are working a good path. And again, a little bit more on the personal side, but second summer here on Cape, what has it been like, you know, meeting with guys all across the country, everyone's come from a different spot. What's that been like for you? Uh, it's just one of the best experiences about summer ball itself. I mean, that's just one of the greatest privileges of baseball itself too. I mean, I met some of my best friends here on Cape. And so, I mean, it's just something that I'm extremely grateful for. And it's one of the best, one of the best parts about all summer leagues for sure. Four. 
last one. That's going to wrap it up for the sharp segment today. But John, John, you know, we've heard that, you know, hear from the buzz around the team that, you know, you have the best hair and the best flow <laughs> on the team. So it is a little longer, a little thicker than last year. Yeah. So what's the mindset behind that? Uh, shoot, really, I just, you know, my barber at school, my boy Trev Conley, our catcher, you know, he just left a little sooner before I before <laughs> I got a chance to get a cut. So it's a little longer than last year. But, yeah, I'll probably go home and get a trim by my, my, other, my other homie and friend back home. So, yeah. I love it. I love it. And, you know, before we go, and uh, just wanted, is there any fun facts about you that everyone should get to know? That you probably can't beat me in ping pong. Ping pong master, really? Yeah, probably can't beat me. Wow. I'll, okay. I'll take a challenge from anybody. Wow, hey, you heard it here first. Someone, someone's got to challenge this guy. This guy's been a menace at the plate and ping pong master. Love to hear it. It's been Nico Sharp, John John Gazzer for an, another episode of Sharp Segment.